If we want to create scripts, we can ask the question, what is the most simple shell script you can think of? What is the most simple shell script you can think of? If I want to write a shell script, what do I have to do? Well, obviously, first, I have to take a comment line, a comment line that works on its own. And second, I have to write this comment line into a text file. And then, no, nothing and then, this is your script. Yeah, You take a comment line that works on its own, you write this comment line into a text file, and this is your script. That sounds easy, so let's try this with a little demonstration. First, I have to choose a comment line. I have to choose a comment line and I will take the comment line echo hello shell scripter. So that's because I know this comment line works. Great. And now I want to put this comment line into a text file. So and here we would face a challenge. If you are writing a shell script for the very first time, then perhaps you will ask, how the hell do I get this comment line into a text file? How should I do this? So, well, you simply need a text editor. And you need a text editor for creating and writing simple plain text files. Nothing like a word processor like OpenOffice or LibreOffice or something like that. You need an editor for simple plain text files. If you are working with a graphical desktop on your scripting machine, then you can take any desktop text editor you can find on your machine. Yeah, for instance, a KWrite, a K Edit, a GNOME Edit, and so on. The only thing you have to care about is that the text editor you choose doesn't add some formatting to your text file. It has to save only the plain text you have entered. Yeah. But if you are on the pure command line, if you are the command line like I am here, then you have to use a text editor for the console. And on many systems, the nano text editor is pre-installed so that you can type in nano nano hello.sh, for instance, to create a new file hello.sh or to, to edit an existing file hello.sh. Yeah. And nano is perhaps the most easiest choice for editing files if this is your first time editing files at a console. Then the nano is perhaps the most easiest choice. So I have my editor open. The nano editor gives me some help at the bottom of the screen. For instance, it gives me the information if I want to write out my file, if I want to save my file, I just have to enter control O for write out. If I want to exit the text editor, I just can hit control X to exit the text editor. I want to insert my comment line into this text file. So I simply type in echo hello shell scripter. So and voila, I have this line in my file. So now I want to save this file. I have to hit control O for printing out. I have to confirm the file name by just hitting enter. And now I want to exit the nano text editor by just hitting control X for exit. So now I have the file hello.sh and I have used the nano text editor, by, but you can use any other text editor you can find or any other text editor you are able to use at the console. So I am using typically the editor, the good old VI or Vim to be more precisely by just calling VI hello.sh. I open a file with the name hello.sh and as you see, this is the content I've entered within the nano text editor. Yeah. Okay. So we have a file. We have the file hello.sh and this file contains our command line. Yeah. You can, you can use any text editor you like as long as you take care about that nothing but your plain text is inserted into this file. We can we can verify this by using the command cat. Command cat prints out the plain 
content of the given file to the console and here we see the plain content and the, there is really only the comment line I have entered. Yeah, looks perfectly. So I named this file hello.sh. I named this file with the file name extension .sh, but this extension is for my comfort only. Your scripts don't need a special extension. Yeah. Linux, Unix systems don't care about something like file name extensions. You can use any extension you would like and even you could use file names without any extension. Yeah. You only have to take care that your script file is a normal plain text file. So now we have a file, hello.sh, with a comment line and this is my shell script. Great, but how do we run? this script. So to run a script, we have two different options. The first option is to take an interpreter, to call an interpreter and give this interpreter the name of the file you want to run as a parameter. So for instance, bash hello.sh and wow, great. My script runs. It works perfectly. So we have multiple shells on your system. Yeah? Typically, there are a few different shells available on a system. And if you want to know what type of shell you are currently in, you could simply type in echo dollar zero. The shell built in variable zero contains the shell or contains the name of the shell you are currently in. So and as you see, I'm currently within the bash shell and because I know the bash shell can interpret my chosen command line, I can use the bash shell to interpret my script. Great. Yeah. But there are other shells available on your system. Yeah. And feel free to try also this shells. I, for instance, have installed on the system the Born shell. The Born shell is typically installed on every system. The Born shell is started by sh. So I could simply try sh hello.sh to run my script. And great, this works also. And I have also the dash shell installed. Dash hello.sh works perfectly. Both shells bond shell dash or all three shells can, the bash the bond shell and the dash can interpret our script and you can take this as a general rule because in this online course we are only using posix compliant patterns then every script you write with this knowledge will be work with every posix compliant shell and the bash and the bond shell and the dash and even the old the old unix shell corn shell for instance is a posix compliant shell so as long as you are using the patterns from this online course all of these shells should be able to interpret our script you can write really really portable scripts okay this is one way to execute your script take a, a script as an interpreter and give it the script as a parameter. So another way to start our script would be to start your shell script like any other comment. You don't want to start an interpreter. You just want to call your shell script like any other comment just by its name. So how can we do this? First, we have to make the script executable. We have to make the script executable. And we can do this by calling change mod plus X. And after that, the name of our script file. So, but what does this command line do? This command line sets the execute flags within the permission flags of this file. Yeah. Now we have the execute flex set for the owner, for the group, for all others, for our file. 
and therefore our file hello.sh now is an executable file. So, and now as it is an executable file, we can run the script. We can simply run the script. I could try with hello.sh, but mm, it would give me a command and found error. Why? Well, remember, if we start a comment, the shell only looks in a defined list of directories for an executable file. And these directories are listed in the environment variable path. So, and I am currently in PWV print working directory. I am currently in home robot. Home robot isn't part of this list in dollar path. So I can't simply call header.sh. I have to give the shell information where this file is. So I have to write, for instance, home robot hello.sh to start my script. Great, this works. Yeah. But I am currently in home robot, so I don't have to write the whole path. I just can use the shortcut for the current directory, the dot. The dot is a shortcut for the current directory so the, the simplest or the, the, the fastest way to start my script would be dot slash hello dot sh. So my script is running. So, and if you want to use your shell script like any other comment, it yeah, means you, you don't want to give the shell a path, then you have to place your script within a directory which is contained in a search path. So I simply could copy hello.sh to user local bin because user local bin is part of the search path. So I could use, I could copy this file there um, because I don't have write permissions to use a local bin as a normal user. I use sudo to gain super user rights while copying this file. So now this file is copied to user local bin. User local bin is part of the search path and therefore I can simply type in hello.sh and my comment will be run. 